I'm doing this video more by public request than anything. I feel like I'm required to comment on the Israel-Gaza war because even my silence at this point seems to be taken as various different statements, sometimes opposing statements. Uh, in truth, I don't like to comment very much on foreign policy, in part because so much is always unknown. There, it's very rarely the case that I know somebody in one of the countries that can tell me what's actually going on. And I don't want to propagate false information, that's important to me. I also don't want to rely on our intelligence agencies because I don't trust them. And that, and by intelligence agency, agencies, I mean both ours and those um, abroad. So because of that, I often feel like, well, we're, we're making judgments on the basis of this perhaps false information. At least some of it will be false. We just don't know what yet. Um, I will say that I do believe that moral people can disagree over the correct action to take in this case. Um, so I'm not I'm not particularly upset if someone says I think we should do this other thing. It's like okay, you know, I I, I guess I'm I'm less emotionally invested um, than some people. So here's what here's what I actually think. Um, so that people will stop um, assigning um, assigning what I think to me. Um, I think that what happened on the first day of the conflict with regard to the Palestinian terrorists going house to house, targeting civilians for murder and rape, um, and then, you know, driving them around to, to demonstrate their, their broken bodies, um, was evil. Like, all of it was just absolutely evil and shocking. And, and they did so, you know, while screaming. Uh, Allahu Akbar, as has be become just so um, connected with Muslim acts of terrorism, right? Which is a pretty fundamental part of their religion. Well, I also think that the calls for complete genocide are unjust and immoral. You know, genocide just against the people, not against like the individuals. Oh, it's not genocide. Uh, who, who? played a role in this but you know like there are good people who live in gaza there are uh, churches and there are catholic churches and ob obviously christian churches <laughs> Um, there are Christians of various types there who are not involved in targeting um, Israel. There are innocent people there. And I think that the, the principles of a just war still apply in this case. Um, let's talk about them. Nobody else is. So <laughs> I figure this is at least um, an interesting thing that we can do together. So um, first principle, and these kind of came out of uh, St. Augustine, so they've been around a while, but uh, the first being that the damage inflicted by the aggressor, in this case it would be the Palestinians, on the nation or community of nations must be lasting, grave, and certain. I, th I think in this particular case that that has been has been matched. So we'll say yes. Um, number two, all other means of putting an end to it must have been shown to be impractical or ineffective. Um, so in other words, can we avoid a, a war at this point, or can Israel, I shouldn't say we, uh, avoid a war? Well, they have tried other methods. It has not worked so far, so we could we could say yes. There must be a serious prospect of success. This is kind of a maybe, you know, because it, it is a problem with such militancy and such kind of guerrilla style warfare, and because whenever you take out one Islamic group, another Islamic group will kind of like move into their into their spot. I mean, what's the difference in effect between Hezbollah and uh, ISIS and Hamas? It's like, well, they're all following the same philosophy or religion, I guess you sh should say, um, and doing the same things because that's, that's literally part of what they believe. Would this have a serious prospect of success, therefore? 
I'm not sure I can say a strong yes, um, but let's just say maybe. We'll say maybe for, for the third one. The fourth one says that the use of arms must not produce, e produce evils and disorders graver than the evil to be eliminated. And <clears throat> the Catechism further says the power of modern means of destruction weighs very heavily in evaluating this condition. Now, so those are our four main principles of a just war. And on that fourth one, um, well, with the people who are calling for a complete genocide of the people, I would say no. Like, that's not moral. I also don't believe that it's moral to do an act of evil to bring about some greater good. I think you should do what's right. Uh, you should do what's what's good and not participate in evil. It's, it's evil to intentionally target uh, children. It's evil when Hamas does it. It's evil when anybody else does it. Um, you know, it's like it's one thing when you have collateral damage as an accidental uh, factor in any war, which does happen um, tragically, but it's different when you have a direct um, attempt or a will and even a willful just disregard. But um, it's just like if you if you're actually like targeting a city, then it's kind of a willful disregard, right? Um, some of the talks have regarded a complete siege on uh, Gaza with no power, no fuel, no food, um, and others have just discussed um, dropping nukes on it. Like all this has come up on even mainstream TV as being all um, acceptable. I don't think it is. I don't think it's moral. Um, even though I also recognize the absolute evil that took place on day one of this conflict. Um, and, uh, you know, by day one of the conflict, I, I, I mean, of course, day one of the, the most recent conflict, because this has been going on for a very long time. Um, I do reject the evangelical arguments about Israel being kind of, Israel as a nation being sort of special in the eyes of God. Uh, the modern Israel's state is not identical to the biblical Israel, um, and God has only ever had one church, and who his people were changed and was expanded at the time of Christ. Um, and so I, I don't really even understand the, the way that they can make the argument that they're making that. Um, so I don't, but I think it's, it's important to at least point that out. Like, um, I'm a Christian. I don't believe that um, that those who deny Christ through their religion are better than those who acknowledged Christ um, in the eyes of God. That that doesn't make any sense. It's not theological. It's not in accordance uh, with my faith. So I'll point that out. Um, finally, I don't think that we need to have millions of refugees uh, or hundreds of thousands of refugees from um, Gaza either. There are Arab nations that are right on the border who it would make sense would be taking those civilians who actually want to flee, presuming Hamas lets them, um, not the United States. The calls to bring them to the United States don't make any sense. It's contrary to United States interests. It is perfectly moral for Americans to favor America and to look for um, look to American interests. Um, I also don't see an obligation for America in in the war. I don't think we need yet another war um, going on. So there you go. There's. I'm I'm sure that I annoyed almost everybody at least once, um, but. Like I said, I would rather at least face criticism for my actual opinions rather than from what other people think my opinions are. Um, so, so there you go. I, like, I recognize it's a complicated situation because, like, I mean, those in Palestine are so incredibly radicalized, you know, um, from pretty young ages, right? Uh, that's that's very clear. But the fact that it becomes um, a, a difficult situation doesn't mean that we throw out all of our morality and our decency and our own faith. And I'm not willing to, I'm not willing to do that. If you enjoyed that video, please don't forget to like it. Also, I have other videos that you might enjoy. I have links in the description down below as to how you can support this work. So thank you so much.